Hey everybody, it's Brett here with The Tuning School, and this Tech Tuesday, we're gonna be talking about a ground offset error where you're experiencing when your HP Tuners unit is reading something different than what your actual wideband is reading and how to correct it. So like I said, occasionally when you're using an external wideband, the display on the wideband is going to read differently than the display in the HP Tuner's scanner. Now this is what's called a ground offset error typically. And what you can do is a couple things. A, you can change the wiring from the wideband to the HP Tuner's unit to fix that ground offset error. Or B, you can actually change how the wideband set up in the HP Tuner scanner. And I'm gonna show you both options here today. That way you can eliminate the discrepancy you're seeing between wideband and software. Now we're gonna talk about how exactly to wire this system up. So most of you guys usually have already have this wired. And just to go over a quick overview, here's our HP Tuner's Pro unit. Now if you have a standard unit, none of this applies to you because what, this sets, uh, what sets this apart from a standard to a pro is this green strip right here. So this guy right here makes it a pro unit and this gives you the ability for five volt programmable inputs and outputs. And obviously what we're dealing with right now is a five volt input. So just to give you guys a little bit of an idea, from here comes the cord for the laptop. On the bottom is the cord that goes to the OBD2 port. We have our HP Tuners unit. Now what the unit that we're gonna be talking about today is this Daytona Sensors WeGo unit, okay? These are really awesome units. It's what we use here at the tuning school, but the process I'm gonna show you applies to pretty much any and all widebands, especially if they have a signal ground on the unit itself. So basically I've got this wired up into pins one and five. Now that goes one is the very top, five is the very bottom, or not the very bottom, but obviously you count down from one. So this one right here is five, and the one up here I actually have in two. Most of, the, most of the time you'll have it in one. One or two or even three are all inputs. You can use any of those. So basically, one is going to go into the output for the wideband. So on the wideband it says analog, or excuse, it says AFR output. So you'd put that wire into that one. Now, also on the wideband, there's a signal ground. Now where the shortcoming is for most people is they take that signal wire and they run it from the wideband to the HB tuners unit and they call it done. Now what they missed was the signal ground, okay? If you add an additional wire and run it from the signal ground on the unit, the wideband unit itself, to the number five pin, the ground on the HP Tuners unit, then you eliminate that discrepancy you're seeing in that signal variance. You're gonna clear up that signal. So that's what you're gonna do here is simply add one wire, a ground wire from signal ground to number five on the HP Tuners unit. All right, so if you've done your wiring and it didn't actually fix the problem, next we're gonna go into how to fix it in the software. Now realize you should only get to the software step after doing the wiring because that wiring trick I just showed you is gonna fix that signal like 90% of the time. But after that point, if you're still actually having problems, there is some adjustments we can make in the software to fix it and that's what we're gonna go over right now. So the first thing that you're gonna to need to do is go to the tuningschool.com and go to about in the top right hand corner of your screen. Once you've got uh, gone to about, there's a download section in the about dropdown folder and in that download section is what's called the wideband offset error spreadsheet, right? So this is an offset error spreadsheet that you're gonna to use to calculate how much to change some things by, okay? So go ahead and locate that, and then once you do, we're gonna jump into the software. So here we are inside the software, and we're going to open up our MPVI one here in this AEM4110. Now, if you've watched our previous videos on how to set up your wideband, in the HP Tuner scanner, I talk exactly about how to set up the Daytona sensors unit, and this is based right off that. So I have this set up in here as I normally would set up a Daytona sensors unit. So what we're gonna do is right click on this and select transform. Now, once we've done that, we have to go in here and locate our AM4110. And to do that, we're gonna look under air fuel ratio, and we see it's right at the top of the screen here. So now we can go ahead and paste this or copy this to our user define, which is this FX button right here. And once it's in there, we're gonna modify this like we had it before for our Daytona sensors unit, which is 0.543 and 10.3. And again, if you don't know why I just did that, then go ahead and go back, watch our how to set up your Daytona sensors WeGo 
and HB Tuner Scanner uh, the, for the 3.0. We did a whole video on what exactly all that just meant there. So now that we've got that done, we're going to need to modify these values so we get the right reading in our software as we do in our unit. So we're going to go down here to our spreadsheet and you see we've already kind of got it set up. So this is set up with our specific uh, information for this wideband. So our wideband is reading at 0 volts, it's 10.3 AFR, and at 5 volts, it's 19.5 AFR. You have to know this information for the wideband that you're using. If you don't know this information, then call the wideband manufacturer or reference your wideband's instructions. And then we've got that formula information you see down here that we actually just inputted. So now, if you scroll down, we actually have uh, some steps and some instructions on exactly how to do this. But basically what this is saying is, if your HB Tuner's scanner is reading, let's say, half a point. So it's off by half a point than what your actual wideband unit itself is reading. Then what you would do is you'd come up here, you'd enter 0.5 in this box here, and you click Enter. And it's going to make an adjustment to this AFR value right here. So now that we know this, it's 0 0.543 and 10.8 instead of 10.3. So then we can go back to our uh, scanner here, we could enter 10.8 and then we would click OK and then the idea is, is this would now read correctly because we've adjusted for the offset error that we're seeing. And you can do the same thing with any value. So let's say that this is off by two points. So we can enter the value of two in here, enter, and we see the new value is 12.3. You'd simply come into your scanner and enter 12.3 and click OK. Now, you just want to keep verifying that this is what it is, and you might have to do this a couple more times to really hone in the offset error, and, but eventually you're going to get to the point where your scanner is going to be reading exactly what your unit is displaying. I hope everybody enjoyed this video and that you were able to learn something from it so when you have this problem in the future, you know exactly what to do. If you want more high-performance tuning knowledge, be sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on social media, and as always, stay tuned.